Hey guys, so here is number three in my series on Nextcloud, running it as a hidden service. Now this video is the most important on the subject. I'm going to be going over some of the configuration mistakes people make and how to properly configure ways to better protect your IP address, that of your server, and the benefits and the drawbacks from a normal cloud setup. So pay close attention and I've started with a slideshow I created. The benefits of Nextcloud is a Tor.onion hidden service. Now, if you have trouble setting one of these up and you want to help support the channel, I'd be happy to send one out ready to go with all the proper configurations. Just email right to privacy at tutnota.com and appreciate all the support. So let's go through this and if you're setting it up yourself and you have any questions, leave a comment below and I'll be happy to help you with it. Let's get started. So the problems with other cl cloud storages, a lot of times these cloud storages are able to scan the files of the system, you have employees that have access to your files, you have a variety of issues. Many clouds actually are stored overseas and many times that's to avoid local laws on spying on their users. With normal cloud storage, a direct connection is required that sacrifices both the privacy of the client, you the user, and the privacy of the server as well. And the certificate authority that's relied upon on normal clouds, that's a third party that handles the encryption. And I'm going to be going over some articles, in fact, that relate to this. In fact, some of these certificate authorities are actually selling access to decrypt the data. You have to really trust all the certificate authorities. People take these things for granted, but we have a variety of certificate authorities that are trusted in each browser and each computer. In fact, years back, Lenovo got in a lot of trouble for basically having a backdoor root certificate that was able to spy on all Lenovo users and this came with the laptop so this wasn't even known until later and in fact it led to Lenovo being banned by US government workers. Dependence on the cloud is the trend and I do worry about a thin client future. Yes I do. It is a strange thought but you know, we all take for granted our local storage, but it, do you notice that it's getting smaller and smaller? Our local storage is getting smaller and our dependence on foreign clouds, that seems to be getting greater. I think a lot of that has to do with data collection. So the benefits of self-hosting your own next cloud as a hidden service. Uh, the beauty in this is you control the certificate, the encryption certificate. In fact, the public key actually makes up your .onion domain. Now, there's no third party who can manipulate the traffic and decrypt it for others. The hidden service keeps your IP address as a client six hops away, so you don't make a direct connection. Unlike normal cloud accounts and servers, where you'll make a direct connection that has your IP address and can basically identify you. So the IP addresses are hidden when set up correctly and I'm going to be going over that and some of the configuration mistakes some people make. In fact some of the default web servers give away that information if a uh, URL is crafted in a very simple way anyone can do this stuff and reveal the IP address unless you set it up correctly. So both the client and the Nextcloud server are both a mystery to one another and that's that's a real beauty in this so you know if you're working as the bottom says perfect for collaborating on private projects that aren't yet ready for release let's say you're working on source code you don't want you know you might be working on an open source project but you're afraid a commercial entity might you know take that source code if you're working on a non self hosted cloud a rented cloud space you may have that information stolen I worry a lot about corporate espionage preying on open source projects and hosting the cloud yourself in a, as a hidden service is the best way to keep that stuff private, including for businesses, charities, nonprofits, anyone who needs to trust the collaboration and the privacy in that collaboration, which is really important. So here's what a Nextcloud hidden service server may look like. This is a Raspberry Pi here. You can get a Raspberry Pi. This is a Raspberry Pi 4 which is the ones I put together. I use Raspberry Pi 4s. They have a few gigs of RAM and that makes everything run really smooth. Let's go through some of the configuration mistakes people make. So here's another thing about running it as a hidden service. You need to know this, that when you set up applications on Nextcloud, if you want to hide the IP address of the server from the users, let's say you don't want to be directly attacked by hackers. Most clouds can be directly attacked in a lot of different manners because of the fact 
that they allow direct connections. But by using it as a hidden service, hackers aren't able to pinpoint the IP address of the server. So when you set up apps and say you allow integration with GitLab or Mastodon, well, Mastodon will show the last IP addresses. So say you have a client. They integrate their own GitLab account. They then log in to their Mastodon. On Mastodon settings, you're able to go through and see the last connections and the Nextcloud server itself is the one that will make the connection. So you have to keep in mind that you'll want to, if you need to protect the IP address of the server, you're going to want to disable any outgoing connections. This includes the email server setup that we're looking at right now. Now there's other things. I'm going to be doing some, you know, code modifications. It'll allow some more usage of the cloud server and really you have access to everything that you normally would, but if you want a custom one with you know, protection of the IP, or if you're planning to set one up, uh, you need to remember that the cloud will make outgoing connections if you set it up to do so. So, for example, this email server thing. If you had allowed it to use SendMail or a local program on your next cloud to send out emails, whether it be for registration or whatnot, you would then have given away your server's IP address in each email header email. If someone knows what they're doing, they can look at the email headers of an email and they can then see what server made the direct connection to deliver that mail. It's important in your next cloud, if your goal is to protect the IP address of the server, to put a not only non-send mail, but I suggest even putting an invalid configuration. If any fallbacks fail, for example, then it will be using an incorrect setup to begin with. Any configuration apps that if your goal is to protect the server IP address from the clients who use the cloud, you will need to prevent outgoing connections. And another thing we're going to take a look at now is the Apache setup. So if you have a default Apache, you know, server, you're going to have virtual host setups and as you can see on my screen, you got virtual host setup. Now, normally people would put the IP address of the server here. Now, we're putting 127.0.0.1 because as a hidden service, you only need that local host connection. So we also have server name down here. Now, if we were to put a full domain of the server or the server alias, when someone runs this URL, and looks at the server dash status at the end of the dot onion, they will be able to read what's in your configuration. So as you can see, vhost here has a full domain. Now if you had multiple domains set up and multiple onions, it would be able to see that. So we're going to disable that. We're going to disable the server status and the different things that allow someone to get information on a server. This is all to protect further than the default settings and I, I just want to go over that. So if people are concerned about you know protecting the location and the IP address of their cloud server they can do that just through a simple configuration change. So remember that the things you put in as your virtual host could be exposed to disable that server status that we were just looking at so that nobody can look at your configuration domain and possibly IP address if you place that in the configuration. Let's go ahead and disable server status. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the configuration of your Apache. Then we're going to go into mods available as we see right here. Then what we're going to do is we're going to edit status.conf. And when we do that, we're going to look down here and see location slash server status. And we got to set this down here and make sure it says deny from all. That means no matter where they're coming from, even if they're on the local area network or the host itself, it will deny the server status and prevent people from viewing the different domains on that web server and also prevent them from seeing the IP address. So these are just a couple things that I wanted to go over. I thought were pretty important for protecting that. So remember this, set up and prevent outgoing connections if you want to protect the server IP from the users on the cloud itself. You don't have to worry about that if you're the only user. But if you're sharing it with people you may not know very well, you may want to prevent those outgoing connections to prevent them from being able to manipulate it or to craft URLs that are able to reveal information. So I hope you got something out of this. Please share this video and subscribe and leave a comment, show your support, like the video, and I'll be back later with more on setting up your own private next cloud and protecting your privacy.